Hello there again and welcome. I am President Stephen Luke of the Commonwealth of Dracul and we are here with Tsar Antonov of Obscurium and he is here for our virtual state visit. As you well know, uh, we tried to have this meeting, I believe it was back in July or August, but there were some complications with the arrival, uh, so we had to push it to a later date. And of course, since we're not here physically, although we aren't here physically, uh, it's better than nothing, especially so we get to meet before the end of the year, so. Indeed, it's still a pleasure to be uh, to be here, though. Well, thank you, and and certainly thank you for for providing your time to the Commonwealth for this special virtual state visit. Uh, to go ahead and get started on the uh, event for today, we are going to begin with the national anthem of of Obscurium. Is, am I saying that correct, Obscurium? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. Very good. I just want to make sure. And uh, we'll start with that, move on to ours, and then we will uh, begin the actual meet and greet, getting to know one another. All right. So without further ado, I would like to begin the Obscurium National Anthem. for the Commonwealth of Dracul National Anthem.
right. And thank you very much. We are back. So, let's go ahead and uh, get started with the uh, with our wonderful event we have here planned today. I'll let you go first, since people will be watching this, of course, and getting to know both of us at the same time. Uh, tell us a little summary, a little rundown of how you started Obscurium, when you started it, and maybe an idea of what uh, gave you the idea. With pleasure. So, um, Obscurium started... Well, as the inofficial version, there's the official version. Unofficially, it started when I was about 14 and I declared my bedroom to be an independent state from Germany because I wasn't happy with uh, school and getting homework. Uh, I forgot about it fairly quickly um, and I had no idea what a micronation was back then. Then in uh, 2018, um, I went down the path of communism a little uh, while I was... Um, developing my understanding of politics and I discovered what a micronation was and I thought to myself, well, I can do that too. Why not claim some territory on Mars and uh, declare independence and uh, such. And so the United People's Republic of Mars was born, which lasted for about a year when uh, I and uh, my fellow citizens, I think we were two or three at the time, decided that um, this doesn't really make any sense and we want to um, get things down to earth a little, uh, in a little meaning, and we decided to rename and remodel the country and also get rid of the communist ideology. And so Obscurium was uh, born. Um, the idea behind it remains kind of the same. Um, basically do everything better than the Federal Republic of Germany. Of course, of course. <laughs> And over the years, um, the second, um, the the second most important point of Obscurum has become to uh, be a home for dragon enthusiasts and promote uh, dragons in general. And um, that's where we stand to this day, always trying to improve things and uh, loving our dragons. Oh, absolutely, I I feel that one hundred percent. So uh, a little rundown of Dracul. We actually started in 2017. I believe I was 26 at the time. And I had actually happened to stumble across uh, a Micronations video. I think it was by Vice News. And it was about the Microcon um, 2. I think it was two Microcons ago that took place in Georgia. I believe it was hosted by Ruritania. I came across that Vice News video and told my friend about it, um, which is Dimitri Howie, our first president. And I asked him what he thought of the idea of having a country. Because at the time, um, even so, more so today uh, in the United States, the government has not been pleasing anyone, um, or at least not the majority. And so we, <coughs> excuse me, came up with the idea of starting our own country as well. So that's what we did with Dimitri being from Russia originally and having a, a Russian and uh, somewhat of a Romanian background. Uh, we decided to in, to incorporate uh, Russian into the uh, Commonwealth, but we wanted to aim more historically towards a little bit better of a time. We didn't want to go the Soviet route, so we decided to go the Imperial Russia route with the last Tsar. Um, you know, as you know, Tsar Nicholas II, making him our patron saint. So there was some homage, some imagery towards him in that regard and then me coming from Romania and so we wanted to uh, go the old ancient uh, Wallachian route with uh, Vlad the Impaler, Vlad the Third. So that's how Dracul came to be. We put Russian and Romanian together because 
Russian came from him and the Romanian from, from me. And then we wanted to incorporate one more so we incorporated a little bit of German in there as well because, um, as you may know, uh, there was also the Kingdom of Romania. And, of course, the Kingdom of Romania had the, the house of, uh, I believe it's, um, it's very difficult for me to pronounce, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, the house of Hohenzollern with, uh, with the monarchy. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but uh, it was the German monarch, the German royal family that uh, held the monarchy in Romania uh, before it uh, was dissolved. So we incorporated a little bit of German in there as well. So that's how you get the three. That's what your cool is made up of. Russian, Romanian, and German heritage. Those are the top three. And before you knew it, we were acting like a real country and establishing diplomacy and having our own national holidays and our marches in the park. And we were getting citizens galore. So it's kind of a, been on a slow track since then. You know, whenever you get a brand new micronation in the community, everybody wants to join it. And then over time, it starts to slow down a little bit, kind of mellow out a little bit. So that's that's the story of Dracul in uh, in somewhat of a sh of a short nutshell, if you will. But uh, I know you've been going on state visits around the world. You've been visiting various different micronations, individuals since about the middle of the year. I wanted to know, how was your visit to other micronations? Did you, did you find it appealing? Did, were you satisfied with your state visits? Yes, uh, I was uh, quite happy with them indeed. Uh... Yeah, the first, uh, originally, of course, I was going to um, visit some micronations over in America. Um, and after that didn't work out, you know, mo most people would have sat down at home and cried for the rest of the summer. Uh, but uh, I am not that kind of person. I'm the kind of person who um, immediately thinks, okay, well, that plan didn't work. Let me quickly restructure everything. And two days later, I'm, all, I'm back on the road again and traveling. Um, and I went to Christiania, uh, which I'm sure um, you will have heard of. Yep. And I actually liked the place uh, very much. I mean, sure, there's the marijuana. Uh, when when you enter uh, Christiania, there's Pusher Street, but nobody really bothers you there. There's a bit of a smell that you go through it. And after that, it's actually quite beautiful and serene i'd say there's a lot of art uh, there are a lot of very quiet places and uh, i actually spent uh, the rest of the afternoon there just um, sitting by the lake and, and enjoying the warm weather uh so that was that was quite lovely and uh, one day later i went to ladonia or nimis uh, in ladonia which is not very far away from copenhagen um, getting there was a bit more difficult than getting to Christiania. They do warn you on the website that uh, the path is uh, very steep, um, which is an understatement. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, the most difficult part really is getting back out, uh, back, getting back up again. But it's it's doable, and um, Ladonia is quite nice too. Uh, I'm sure you can spend an afternoon there as well, but since it's a bit uh, off the um of the main um, roads and since i did not have much time i had to get back home uh i only i was only able to spend an hour there but i did meet the uh, ladonian mister of art and jump by accident he was just coming down the mountain with a couple of uh, wooden beams <laughs> and we talked a little then i got interviewed by the swedish radio which was trailing after him and uh so yeah ladonia uh, also a very nice um, place to visit um, and uh, after that, I visited some micronations uh, with um, where I was actually made able to meet their leaders. Obviously, Christiania, I don't even fully understand the government structure, and uh, I certainly do not know if they have any kind of leader. 
um, in Ladonia uh, because it, it was uh, such an improvised trip. I, I didn't uh, write any Ladonian government officials and ask them if they were uh, able to meet up with me. The whole thing with the Minister of Avenger was by accident. Sure. So the next micronation I visited was Edristan, which is uh, located in North Rhine-Westphalia. And I know their leader, uh, their president, um, Nils Seute from the Micro Euro Summit, uh, which was held in Kiche this summer, which uh, I organized with Arthur um, de Tournou of uh, Dictionary. Um, so I got to know, uh, I got to meet a lot of new micronations there, and um, we agreed at the summit that we would meet up sometime in the future, and uh, sometime came, so came sooner than I expected. And next thing I knew, I was in Bonn and uh, meeting up with them. Yeah. They showed me their uh, their territory. Um, we had a uh, afternoon there, and we went up a, a mountain with lots of dragons on it. Um, we would love the dragon a part. Successful visit too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can miss out on the dragons if there are any in the area. I actually went up uh, that mountain two times in two days. Just before I went to Edristan, I went up the mountain, and then uh, on the last day of my visit to Edristan. Uh, Niels wanted to go with me as well, so uh, we went up again. Uh, I didn't. I didn't regret it. Both times were great, um, and uh, I am especially happy about my visit to Edristan because uh, we exchanged a lot of ideas on design. And um, when I was there, they actually ordered their first business cards and their first stamp, and uh, we um, did everything together. So that was quite successful. And last one I visited that summer was Dictionary again. Uh, I've been there before last year, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I went there again this year for a one-week visit. Actually, last last year it was just an afternoon. This year it was one week, um, which I didn't regret I either. We uh, did a couple of day trips: uh, one to Czechia, uh, one to uh, Bavaria. It was actually a two-day trip. Um, did some stuff in the area and did a proper uh, photo photo shoot as well. Um, last time I, I didn't have a, a uniform which was much good, much good, so this time uh, everything was done a bit better and we had much more time to um, plan things out. And also um, I assisted them in um, getting their first uh, na naval vessel. Um, and we went on a on a small um, trip with the with the new um, the first ship of the Dictionary Navy to a island in the river in. Unfortunately, the trip was cut short by a thunderstorm, um, so we had to get back to land very quickly. <laughs> but um, it was still nice. Well, that's good. I'm glad it really went well for you, especially with uh, you know with you having the the issues of. Uh, the United States visit. I know, like you said. Well, who wants? I mean, who wants to go that, home and cry when they could just keep going? Wasn't even on? the main issue. Uh, the main issue was actually a German police. Um, this is something that might surprise uh, some people. Uh, I wasn't actually after the whole thing. I wasn't actually too bothered about the Americans because uh, you know they just let me go. They uh, and they, they sent me back to Germany. They didn't keep any of my stuff. Uh, they didn't intern me or anything. And when I got back to Germany, I was greeted like I was a criminal. Uh, they brought me to a police station. They uh, interrogated me for another two hours. Uh, I had to explain what a micronation was again uh, for the probably tenth time that that day. And uh, it was not a pleasant experience. And th I am still a German citizen, of course, I still have my German citizenship, and as a German citizen, I was quite uh, outraged by how they were treating me. I'm... I'm, I'm at a shock. Um, did they... And you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, I'm just curious. This was when you returned home? Mm-hmm. Was there uh, any yeah. probable cause or any reason as to why they had suspicion on you? The, uh, no, because um, the Americans didn't actually tell them uh, why I was being sent back, sent back. They didn't have any idea about Obscurium. All they knew was there is this guy who is German coming back on this plane and he got rejected 
uh, at the American border. They didn't know anything else, and that's why they asked me so many questions too, because they also wanted to know uh, why I was being sent back. Uh, it didn't help that I didn't actually get any written statement from the Americans on why I was refused entry. Uh, I actually have the uh, admitted stamp in my passport, which allows me to stay in the US until the 3rd of October. And there's no evidence of, of me uh, not being <laughs> admitted into the country. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it was really strange, uh, and that it also makes it strange why the Germans were so uh, were treating me this way because they they didn't know why I was being sent back, so they didn't really have any reason to suspect me of anything. Other than being sent back, which I guess is a crime now. Yeah, apparently being sent back is a crime. Not going to a country is a crime. Yeah. See, everything's backwards these days. <laughs> But hey, you know, it gives you one more reason to not like the government. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. All the more and reason to have a micronation. Indeed. And in the end, I am I'm not happy about it, but I'm glad I got to travel to all, uh, all these European micronations who I wouldn't have traveled to this summer otherwise. And traveling to micronations in general is always such a great experience. Uh, there's no no such no other place like a micronation. You know, when you when you go uh, when you go to other places, you might spend some time there and then leave again. But when you go to a micronation, there's just so many uh, little details because suddenly everything becomes important because it's a micronation, and that just makes it so much more special to go to such a place. It does. It does. And you know, Dracul is gonna, of course, hopefully, in the beginning of next year. We're going to try to give another round of travels. We haven't really done it that much. It's been kind of difficult to travel, you know, especially since the whole COVID pandemic started. It's been very difficult to, to travel and people are still very scared. It's getting better, but for some people it's very difficult to, uh, to try to get back to normal. But we're going to try to do some more visits in, uh, in uh, 2023. I would like to eventually go to uh, Europe. That would be really neat. And actually have Dracul go to Romania. And actually have Dracul in Romania. The birthplace, I guess you could say, of our heritage and, uh, and where we stem from. But I am glad that you did get to meet. Uh, I know you just talked about uh, uh, ductarity. Um, we actually signed a treaty with them, I think it was last month, um, my, mainly for the reasons of uh, we had gotten to know them. They had been following us for quite some time, started to get to know one another. This was probably around, I think it was around August, September. Well, we're already in September now, so this was around July or August. Right. It must have been August, I think. Yeah, I think it was August. Because I was actually there when, uh, when they received the email from you. Oh, okay, okay. I think because it was just a few days, oh, I forgot to mention, we also went to the consulate of uh, the Principality of Seborga in Munich, where we had an afternoon chat with the consul, which was quite special because, as you may know, Seborga doesn't really interact with micronations at all. Right. But he was interested in just hearing about our micronations and what motivated us, so we had a lovely talk with him. And apparently uh, that kicked off a lot of um, good things for Dictionary. Always a good thing. Always a very good thing. Whenever, and then see that's the thing. Even though they don't consider themselves really a micronation, of course, some would consider them to be one, and and it also depends mm. on 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 the you know the manner of how they conduct themselves. I think it certainly helps because it's not only good for your image. But it's also good for their image because they're willing to meet people inside the rest of the community. There are a lot of micronations who don't consider themselves to be micronations that are out there that limit themselves on who they interact with. You know, there have, there have been a couple of those that Dracul has tried to reach out to and not necessarily to have a treaty or anything, but just to, to, to talk to them, to communicate with them to get to know them, to get our name out there. 
And sometimes they just say, no, 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 we don't want to talk to you. We're not a micronation. And it's like, okay, we're just trying to be diplomatic with you. But uh, the more the years go on, the more we get known, the more good we do for the community. It gets a little bit easier for some of them to actually, you know, meet with us um, or at least have a couple of exchanges with us. Um, for instance, um, Kevin Baugh of Molossia uh, has spoken to us on numerous occasions and actually participated in our micro workshop. Had you ever heard of micro workshop? I believe it was this year or last year? I think it was last year and I did hear of it. Unfortunately, on the day it was held, uh, I was not uh, available. So I, I didn't uh, attend that. We do, I don't know if you'd ever seen it or not, but we do have it on the Dracul YouTube if you want to go back and watch it. We recorded oh. it. Well, that's some useful information. Yep. So we had Kevin Baugh, uh, let's see, uh, Nicholas of Flandrensis, Frey of Lorenzburg was there, uh, Travis of West Artica, I think I'd said Kevin Ball, he was there. And they all presented wonderful speeches. Um, and then I gave a presentation as well on micronational security uh, and safety for uh, personal information, why micronations need to take confidential information seriously. Like for instance, when someone applies for citizenship with a micronation, how those micronations need to take seriously the confidentiality of and the proper security of storing their citizens' personal information. Because, you know, if you collect person's personal information, you need to be able to secure it uh, because then you are responsible for it since you hold it. And a lot of micronations use third party systems for storing it, like form databases but you have to make sure that those form databases are highly encrypted have a good security mm -hmm. certificate that they're not easy for data leak so i'm glad it went really well with you and your state visits everywhere um, but yes we we reached out to uh Ducatary because uh because of the professionalism. It's shown a lot of interest in Dracul. And when I took a look at them, I'm sure you can attest because you met them in person. Very professional micronation. Oh yes, indeed. And and very they, well dressed. That too, that too. They uh, they do try their best and they, they do succeed. Mm. And they have to, uh, they have been massively improving over uh, since the last time I met them and doing new things. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy for the success, I must say. Yeah, anytime I see a micronation taking it seriously and going down the, the professional route like that, um, especially in a public viewing where everybody can see them, then I think it's to be commended because you don't really see it a lot these days. There are a lot of professional micronations out there, but you do get a lot of other micronations as well that really aren't as professional as they should be. If we're going to be representing governments, if we're going to be our own government, if we're going to be our own country, and we're going to be world leaders, like the macro world, there comes a time where you have to be serious, and sometimes the micronations out there lack, lack it. And I don't know if it might be because of some, maybe some maturity issues, maybe if it's because of age, Maybe it's because of a lack of experience and they don't know. I don't think it's really a bad or evil thing. It's just something that needs to be improved upon, you know. Uh, so what are some of the, uh, to move on, to talk about Obscurium, what are some of the goals? Do you have any goals set forth for the next couple of years? Things that you are aiming to accomplish? that you might want the rest of the community to know about? 
Yes, we do indeed. Well, our main goal is, of course, uh, the, con, uh, the continuing work on the uh, obscuring constitution, which uh, has not been finished yet. Obviously, I was, uh, I am the uh, the person who is tasked with writing everything. And I've had a lot of input from the from my citizens and um, other persons as well, and I've put it a lot together, a lot of ideas, but I just haven't had the opportunity to sit down and actually formulate yet and as we go along of course there are going to be more uh, talks of the citizens to flesh out the whole thing it's a gradual process so i don't expect it to be done this year uh maybe next year or so uh, but we're taking it uh taking it slowly um to ensure that we are getting it right uh, because we don't want to uh, change our constitution every other month because uh oh we made a mistake here oh that shouldn't be that way we want to get it right um uh, and um, so we don't have to edit it all the time. No, I agree. I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, I actually have been speaking a lot recently with uh, Jordan Farmer, the Prime Minister of West Antarctica, and I actually had him on a micro podcast that I do a couple of times a month with my co-host, my Vice Chancellor, Connor Modena. And we were talking about that very thing about not rushing it because it's like they say if you if you have to rush something then it will probably come out crap and normally mm -hmm. you know that's that's what ends up happening you have to you need to have a reason for doing things you have to think deliberately plan intentionally and have reasoning behind your changes. And you're right. You don't want to change your constitution every four to six months. You want to make sure that it is a living, breathing, executable document that you can have for years and only make changes when it's absolutely necessary. So I definitely commend you on that. I think it's a great idea to go that route. Um, and of course, we're making our recent changes too, as I'm sure you might have heard. Um, mm -hmm. Changing from a republic to a constitutional monarchy, or a crowned republic. You know, Dracul is now adopting a prince, and of course, they will be only ceremonial uh, to help us continue our legacy, the the legacy of Vlad Tepesh and uh, preserve Dracul's internal history as well and be able to be a figurehead, a ceremonial figurehead, someone to represent Dracul dipl uh, diplomatically and to be able to award Draculians and friends of Draculians who go above and beyond to help the Commonwealth. So it, it's going to be a great opportunity uh, already having some great changes, some positive feedback from it already. So I'm very, very pleased to, uh, to report on that. We're going to hopefully be installing the monarchy in the next month or two. We originally planned for six months, but I don't think it's going to be necessary because uh, James of Great Hanover, I don't know if you've ever met him, but he is uh, very, very professional. He has the same vision as the rest of us. He has the same idea. He told me when I asked him about it, when he was, when the idea was proposed to him, I said, we're not looking for a monarch who wants to take the government control. We're looking for more of an ornament, more of uh, a symbol of Dracul and he said no no I'm not wanting to control any government I just want to sit back and look pretty and represent the country so I said well great then it's going to work for both of us then because we both that's exactly what the both of us want so that'll be interesting to see how that history turns out once it's official of course as you know I was the president but that position has now been changed to Chancellor so it operates the same way that the Chancellor of Germany does. So, our goals... And, oh, go ahead. 
And ch Chancellor, in all fa fairness, in, in my opinion, at least, does sound uh, quite lovely. It does. It does. Since we have the German, since we have the German uh, connection in in uh, Dracul, we wanted to have a little bit of German added to it. Not only that, but as you said, Chancellor has a nice ring to it. Has a great sound. And not only that, you don't really find a lot of chancellors in micronationalism. It's true, it's true. You know, so we wanted something unique. Because if we went with prime minister, like everybody else does that has a prime yeah. minister, then it's just, you know, the same thing again. It's, it's unoriginal, you know. So we wanted to go with that. But it'll be really interesting to, to, to see how the history turns out. Um, yes, I, I am. I'm also looking forward to seeing uh, what, what happens next in Dracul. Uh, I was actually, um, I actually want to ask you a question regarding that. You asked if I uh, knew James uh, of Great Hanover. I actually had never heard of him before. Um, I heard the news about Dracul planning on becoming a monarchy, which is why uh, uh, I'm curious uh, to hear how did you. Um, how did you come to uh, ask him to become uh, the Dracul's monarch? Uh, was there a particular reason for, for asking him specifically? There was. And there was a way that we met him. Uh, and it actually was uh, organic, organically. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't forced or, uh, by any other means. He was actually referred to us we were letting a couple of our close, more distinguished micronations know about the idea of us wanting to adopt a monarchy. And it was uh, West Artica that actually helped us. They said, if you're looking for a prince, if you're looking for someone reliable, someone with a, a very professional sense to them, someone who has years and years of experience with monarchies and someone who wants to do it in a form of a retirement and when I say retirement I mean of course by the monarch power they just want to be a part of it uh, we know someone that we could uh, refer to you someone who we would like you to meet see if it works out if you like one another and you think it's a good fit then you both can decide if you want to go ahead with one another. And so uh, West Artica introduced us to James and we met with him and it was a great conversation from the very beginning. We never had any discomfort with one another or having to break the ice or anything along those lines. It was just professional from the very beginning. We let him know what we wanted. He let us know what he wanted. Uh, he told us some of his history. He's been in, been in the monarch history, studying it and operating as a monarch of uh, Scone and Great Hanover uh, since uh, I think at least 2010, if not longer. So he's been around for quite some time. But he has always mostly focused on on a smaller concept of it, more internal. You know, he really hasn't really ever considered himself to be a micronationalist because most of the things that he has ruled over as a monarch haven't really been micronations, but have been more internal, private uh, courts, orders. Uh, things along those lines. So this will be pretty much his first major introduction into micronationalism. Uh, he doesn't really like the concept of uh, the, the word micronation and uh, it can be it can be a little a little discomforting to him. I think it's it's mainly because, he, he strives to be as professional and as accurate as humanly possible when it comes to uh, 
nation running and things along those lines and and powers and micronational uh, and uh, well what we call micronationalism um, so he a lot of times you know he'll see micronations doing a lot of things that that real countries don't do and it is a little off-putting to him and I can understand why because it's like well why are why is this necessary why are we doing this like for instance recognition I'd asked him what he thought about recognition and he understands the idea of why it's done in micronationalism but at the same time it's like well most countries in the world don't sign treaties to recognize one another they just engage in diplomacy and that's the recognition you know uh, so uh, it's going to be a little bit of a change for him but he's willing to to adapt and uh, you know let us run the government part while he focuses on the monarchy so we're looking forward to that um, well, I'm happy to hear so and we from Obscurium wish you all the best well thank you in that endeavor now it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's it's definitely the the boost that we've needed. It makes a lot of sense. Going back to what you had talked about earlier, mm -hmm. doing things with reason, like for instance, you said changing your constitution and having a reason for doing it, and then you know of course uh, taking your time with it. You know we're not wanting to rush into starting the monarchy. We want to make sure we get it perfect the very first time mm -hmm. slowly plan it and then when we're ready then we'll launch it now we are a crowned republic right now but the throne is vacant so I'm serving as the interim the acting head of state until he comes uh, into play when he comes when he's installed then he will take over the head of state and I will only be the head of government. But that's the way we want it, you know. And he's he's taking this month and all the time he needs to prepare for uh, understanding Romanian history, Wallachian history, to be more specific. That way, when he is installed, and begins his work on the day one he knows exactly what to do he knows the history he knows our what we're aiming towards our imagery and symbolism that way he doesn't have to learn when he is prince he'll already know when he becomes prince our history and coming up with a lot of great concepts and a lot of a lot of great symbolism uh, he he was working on his uh, mantle, his royal mantle, for being the prince of Dracul, and he designed it to uh, be very similar to Vlad Tepes' mantle. Ah, uh, that's lovely. So he'll look like Dracula when he's wearing it. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> It's, it's going to be interesting. It really will. But, but again, we're preserving the history mm -hmm. and trying to educate more people on that. Because, you know, yeah, you can purchase a book on Dracula. You could purchase a book on Romania. But you don't really get to see that type of history being relived. You don't really mm -hmm. get to see it in action. And now you will. You get to experience the real vlad the impaler type uh, image and that's another reason why we chose prince we chose the title prince because dracul is not very large so we don't need a king we're very small it's only ceremonial so there's no reason for it to be a large position and vlad tepesh was a prince so it only makes sense that the monarch of dracul be a prince too to you know to mm -hmm. symbolize that so that's, of course. That's how, um, that's how we came about that. Now, uh, I'll let you go first. I'm sure you might have some. If not, we can move on. But are there any questions that you have about Dracul? Maybe something you've always wondered, question that's unanswered, why something is the way it is, 
anything at all? I do have a question uh -huh. um, which relates to something obscure and wants to do in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on right now. Um, on advice from uh, Adristan, we actually we're actually planning on um, making creating our own currency. Oh, okay. Um, of course, as I understand, Rakul has uh, already has its own currency, and I wanted to ask you uh, if you have any advice uh, on um, creating a micronational currency. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I have some of the currency right here. Oh. So I could give you a little a little demonstration. This is our 100 mark. We call them marks. We didn't want to call them Deutschmarks, so we just called them marks. <clears throat> um, I wanted to ask you that. As a German citizen, I know it's not a currency that you use anymore. I know you are on the euro now, correct? Mm hmm Correct. Um, is it still easy to see or to find Deutschmarks in Germany? No. No. Um, so I have never actually in my life seen an actual uh, Deutsch, uh, I'm just going to call them D-Mark, uh, D-Mark bill, uh -huh. uh, not even an East German one, and I see East German things a lot on flea markets and in museums, you'll see a lot of East German things, but never currency, uh, and not West German, not East German, the only currency uh, uh, of the D-Mark I have ever found was uh, a, fe a piece, uh, a one fennec uh, coin. Oh, okay. So that's the only thing you might find, a little coin. And because they look very similar to the one cent coin, uh, at first glance, uh, same size, same color, uh, you, you'll you overlook them easily. And, they, and they're not very common either, but you know, sometimes you, you, you find one or you see one in your wallet for some reason. Sure. Uh, but uh, no, uh, you don't see anything of the currency. Same for other European countries I've been to. I mean, I've only been to other countries as a tourist, of course, but I've never seen any trace of their old currency there either. I guess that makes sense, since you wouldn't really find it much because it's not used anymore. So, mm. I guess uh, Unless we're talking about countries that still use their own currency, like Czechia and Poland and um, Denmark. Well, you won't see much of currency in Denmark either, because they all, only all use credit cards there. Oh, really? If you if you try to uh, if you come uh, if you try to pay with cash in Denmark, it'll be awkward. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it's not it's not really normal anymore. The I... only place uh, the only place in Denmark where paying with cash was normal was in Christiania for obvious reasons. Sure. Now that makes sense. I guess it would be similar to someone trying to pay in, in um, half dollars here in the United States. Mm. The very large coins with John F. Kennedy's face on it. You don't see them much anymore, but they're still, they're still considered currency. They're still legal tenders, just you don't see them much anymore because they're so large and they're so heavy to put in your pocket or, or to put in your wallet. Um, but yes, we... We do have, uh, this is our one mark, Nicholas. There's Nicholas. Yep. So there's Nicholas there. Uh, we use cotton fiber paper. So it's half paper, half cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people ask, how do you find the paper? It's actually not difficult. It's no different than resume paper. You can actually find resume paper that's half paper, half cotton. And that's what mm -hmm. we use. We use resume paper. That's how we use our currency. And then there's the back of it. Mm -hmm. And then and then you just print it. Uh... And then we just print it. And we print it high quality. So it doesn't mm -hmm. print fast. It takes probably about three minutes to print an entire sheet of about six of each right. denomination. So there's that one. This will be going back towards German. I'm sure you'll be aware of. This is our five mark. Is that Friedrich the Great? It is. Yes. Yeah, it is. Ah, uh, the old Fritz. That's right, the old Fritz. So the back is pretty much 
Yeah. The same as I, I have to mention a fun fact about uh, about his tomb uh, while we're talking about this. He loved his dogs a lot and um, before he died he asked not to be buried in any big mausoleum or anything. He simply wanted to be buried in his garden with his two dogs and that's where he uh, lies to this day. With a couple of potatoes uh, on top of his grave because uh, I should know. I should know about this. Uh, I think he brought the potato to Prussia. I introduced it. I'm not quite certain about that, but he had definitely had something to do with potatoes, and that's why there are also potatoes on his grave. I see. So, this is going back towards Romanian history. This is uh, Stephen the Great. Ah, yes. So we have that on there. As you can see, the colors are very similar to that of the euro. Mm -hmm. That's where we got our inspiration from, was from the Euro. Um, we're actually going a little bit towards the American route this year with our notes that are about to come out. <clears throat> On our 20 mark note, we have, again, Romanian, Michael the Brave. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have that. Uh, and then our 50 and 100... Alexandru Cusa on our 50 mark. This is more towards, uh, not Wallachian, but this is more of the little bit more modern Romania. This is with the United Principalities um, before it was the Kingdom of Romania, the United mm -hmm. Principalities of Moldova and Wallachia. And then, right. Of course, on the 100 mark, ah. there's Vlad. The man himself. The man himself, yep. So, so that's, um, that. those are our notes. We do give advice on banknotes. So we are working with right now the Penn Federal Republic. They're out of Pennsylvania here in the United States. Um, they're wanting us to help them with a currency. So we're, we are currently in the discussion phase. We've been in that phase for a couple of, probably about two or three months now. And uh, it takes a long time. People, mm -hmm. people want to rush through it. Oh, I gotta have the currency by tomorrow. You know, I gotta hurry and, and get the currency. And, and I tell people, we really need to plan this out. It takes a little while. It's like you said. You don't want to rush these things because mm. if you rush it, then it might not make any sense or exactly it might turn out bad. But I'll try to get this one here. This is a, um, a rough draft, so it's not official, but this is what the, what the new ones are going to look like. And they actually have Draculians on them now. Ah. So I like that a lot. Now we have a 500 Mark one. I added that because we didn't want to leave off Vlad. So it's a specialty one. And then you have people like my vice chancellor, myself, and then the very first president, President Howie. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much how those are going to look for 2022. Very nice. Yeah, I love it. I love it when uh, when um, when micro nations include their own citizens in uh, in their designs and such. G gives them a more personal uh, touch. It does. Instead it, of just uh, other other things. It does. It really does. Um, and it's also you know more of a respect thing. I mean, it's great that we have all of our other symbols. Mm hmm. And, uh, and our previous currency. And that's one of the main reasons why we change it every year. Because, you know, we actually have people ask us a lot, is it a fiat currency? Is there anything to back up the currency? Well, no. It's valuable because we make it. It's a collector's item. You know, you can't, you can't exchange it for anything uh, unless you traded it with another Draculian for you know, service. Hey, if you cut my grass, I'll give you all of my Dracul notes. 
you know, or something like that, Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're valuable to me. And I think that they are worth the amount of cutting someone's grass, you know, that, um, that type of a payment, you know, or something like Mm -hmm. that. Or if you, if you buy me lunch, I'll give you my 500 mark Vlad banknote or something like that, you know. Must be a very good lunch then. Yeah, it must be a very good lunch. You, you better take someone out on a steak dinner for that one. <laughs> but yeah, um, if that's something you'd be interested in, then we we would certainly entertain the idea of helping you out. We would just, uh, we would of course discuss having a type of uh, design and colors and how you would want it to look and how you would want it to be represented. But yeah, that's one of the main reasons why we change it every year in the way it looks is because mm-hmm. it's a collector's item. If it looks the same every year, people aren't going to buy it. Yeah. You know, and we want to include other people and other pictures on our notes, you know, throughout the years to make it unique and not to exclude anybody. So, um, so that, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um. Do you have any other questions about uh, Dracul or any projects that we're working on or anything along those lines? Uh, no, I don't uh, believe I do. Um, you pretty much answered all my questions, uh, all the questions I had. That's always a good thing when I can answer the first, answer them all in the first first batch because I don't like to leave anybody, you know, wondering. When they walk away, I want them to be, you know, fully assured that they know the answers to everything about Mm us. So I think it was a great state visit. Whenever you come back to the United States and they let you in this time, (laughs) stop by. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna take some time. I mean, I, I tried to ask them at the airport, so when, when can I come back? And they said, well, you have to check with the embassy. And then I asked the embassy, well, you have to check with Homeland Security. So it's basically a situation of now of them want to tell me when I can come back. And I am, they told me I can only come back with a visa. And I'm not going to spend 160 euros on a visa uh, when I'm not even sure that I'm going to get it. Uh, so my some of my friends claim that... I could be banned from entering the US for the next two to ten years right now, so it's probably gonna be like that. I'm not going to travel to the US for the next ten years, yeah. You know what? I have an idea. Since they want to give you so... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. US government, don't come after me, it's simply a joke, but really... Because it's so difficult for you to get in, you would have more luck, and as I said, this is a disclaimer. I am not ge- I am not telling him to do this. It's just a, it is just a joke. But you would have more luck getting into the United States illegally through Mexico right now than you would actually getting approved for a visa. That's how ridiculous it is. Well, I do know some people in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> But really, you know, because they're letting everybody in down at the southern border. So No, it's true. It's true. You would have, I mean, it's sad to it's, say. It's but a crazy world. It is. It is. Everything's backwards. Yeah, everything is back. Everything is confusing and mixed <laughs> up and messy. Oh, well. But if you, uh, if you ever decide to um, come over to Europe, uh, I will be happy uh, to meet uh, you in person over here. Very good. Europe is still open to me, luckily, so I can go wherever I want uh, in the old world. Yeah, don't get banned from the rest of Europe next. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best. I get banned from, Germ- from Germany for being a micronationalist. Right. But I know. I know. I don't know. They don't, they don't see it's very similar to the imperial citizens problem we have in Germany. Uh, so uh, they are very suspicious when it comes to anyone who says they're president of a country or they have anything to do with a uh, self-declared state or anything like that. Best thing to tell them if they ask, because you can try and explain micronationalism to someone. Some people understand it. Other people just don't get it. 
And if you get mm-hmm. someone in the German government who just doesn't get it and you try to explain it, they're going to see that as a security risk, you know? So the best way that I have found to explain it to people who don't get it, especially to someone in the government, because you don't want them to get the idea that you're doing something bad, because we're not. Best way to do it is just to tell them it's a club. It's a club Mm. that operates like a country. Even though we micronationalists don't see it that way, That's the best way to describe it to somebody. It's a club that acts like a country, a club that has a board of directors with the president. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really well. I, I wish I had known that before. I uh, I tried to explain it to, to the German government. <laughs> I actually I actually tried to explain as much detail as I could. Uh, see, uh, back before the the summit we had in the summer. I drafted up uh, the Kishe Charter, uh, as, as we call it, uh, which basically states that we distance ourselves from any uh, far right and far left co- political groups, from uh, imperial citizens especially, and um, try to set some standards for micronations, for example, not to um, trick their citizens into uh, giving, in giving them money and uh, Basically, not to cheat their citizens, not to be bis- dishonest with them, uh, to conduct themselves in a in a serious and uh, civilized manner. And I, I gave I gave that charter to uh, the uh, the German officials in the hopes that they it might serve uh, as a clear statement that no, we do not tr- we are not trying to overthrow a federal republic. Um, mm-hmm. This is not this is not some kind of terrorist uh, group we are running. I feel sometimes the more you try to explain and the more detail you give a government about a micronation, the more suspicious they become. Mm. So I keep it. So I've been told afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing was, I had at that point, I hadn't slept in like 36 or 40 hours and I I didn't really know what I mean. At this point, I I just think about and I I, I think about multiple things I did and said, and uh, I thought to myself, why in God's name did I tell him that? Why did I do that? (laughs) But uh, once you get into a situation like that, it's uh, complicated to say the least. It is. It's difficult to get yourself out of, but at least I'm glad they didn't arrest you and they let you go. Yeah, at least that. Well, thank you for your time today. It was great to meet you and have this virtual state visit. And uh, I certainly want to maintain communication with you. You're more than welcome. Absolutely. More than welcome to come to the Dracul server if you'd like to be uh, listed as a uh, foreign diplomat and see how we operate day to day. And uh, hopefully we can uh, speak more. And uh, once we establish something, we can help one another out somehow we can take a look into uh furthering the relations as well mm-hmm. so i would very much like that and uh thank you for um doing the state visit with me absolutely I, i'm really happy i'm really happy it worked out so well me too we really did well on this one this is actually our second virtual state visit the first one was with uh with uh Raffania with uh, Charles Ross Mm -hmm. over in Arizona. So, uh, which is funny because he's actually been here twice in person, (laughs) but when he started his country again, he was already Uh, back home. So we had to do it virtually, so. Ah, I see, I see. But. See, one last thing I have to mention is, Mm -hmm. when you mention countries like Rafania or um, West Arctica, Many of those countries, I I know because uh, I uh, well, we I did it the same with Dracula. That's how I, I got to know Dracula, I think as well uh, through the micronational flag archive I I'm running. Um, I basically go around and ask for uh, the flags of and state symbols of micronations, and then I put them into an archive, uh, neatly listed with uh, relevant information, so everybody can find everything on one site basically. I know you'd ask, and that's what goes through my mind. Oh yeah, I know, I know their flag. (laughs) I know their coat of arms. Yeah, well, I don't know if you've heard the news, but it might be changing soon. I have been keeping an eye on that. Yep. So. And I, I I will be asking for the new one too once if if uh, if it does come to uh, change indeed. 
Oh, absolutely. Well, if it happens to do that, and uh, and uh, I'm, it's looking good so far. People really are on on board with it. But if if it does come uh, into to fruition and it does pass, that right there is um, is that is is the flag. Uh, so you already have it if it passes Parliament. Wonderful, thank you. Absolutely. And I will already know the adoption date as well. Exactly, exactly. Whenever the Parliament passes it at next session, I'm not sure when the next session is, but whenever they pass it at next session, it'll be immediate. So when you hear about it being passed, that's the date that it passed. Wonderful. So. Thank you very much for your time. Let's stay uh, in communication with one another. And uh, it, was a, it was a great, great visit with you today. Hope everything pleasure goes well. Pleasure was all mine. Well, thank you. And as well, ple pleasure is all mine. Believe me. Hope everything goes well with Obscurium. Thank you. And again, best wishes to Rakul for the future, for the transition to Mark, and for the new flag. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Cheers.